The top stories. Record arrivals reported for January to June. The pilot in Sunday's crash speaks about the experience. And a silver for Barbados at the Special Olympics World Games. Welcome to Nation News for Tuesday, July the 28th, 2015. Tourism officials are basking in the best first half visitor arrivals performance Barbados has experienced for almost three decades. The chairman of the BTMI, the Tourism Marketing Agency, told a media conference that more than 300,000 long-stay visitors landed in the first six months of the year, the highest number in 29 years. Alvin Jemmett said the numbers represented a 14.3% increase on arrivals for the first six months of last year and surpassed all expectations. Cruise ship arrivals were also up 12% for the April to June period as more than 115,000 passengers arrived on 52 cruise ships. Mr. Jemmett said the adjustment to Britain's air passenger duty, a reduction in unemployment in the United States and falling oil prices contributed to the increase. To keep the numbers high, he said tourism officials will be designing a new national public awareness campaign to support their digital marketing strategy. To some, including the opposition, the government's austerity program has been a big failure. Central Bank Governor Delisle Worrell is disputing that assessment big time. In fact, he has used a speech to tell the nation that the program of fiscal tightening has been working so well since late 2013 that it is now a textbook demonstration for other small countries facing economic adversity. Dr. Worrell says Barbados has lessons to teach the world, including how to grow the foreign exchange-constrained economy and sustaining fiscal policy. He made the comments during the opening of the bank's 35th annual review seminar at Accra Beach Hotel. Pilot and flight instructor Richard Terrellonge has been recounting how a refresher exercise he was undertaking ended with an emergency landing in a Christchurch field on Sunday. The 72-year-old told Nation News that he rented a light plane to keep his skills sharp, but during the flight it suddenly lost altitude and he had no choice but to land where he could. It got to the point where I started to feel that I was getting a little low which happens depending on the wind. But it was a little too low. So I said, something's wrong here. So I gave, I was gonna go around and do it again. So I applied full power. I enriched the mixture on the engine, the fuel mix, air mixture on the engine. And then I put on, applied carburetor heat to get rid of any potential carburetor icing and nothing worked. So I called the tower and I said, Mayday, I have an emergency. And I went back to my business of trying to get the engine started and nothing. I called the back and said, I'm not going to make the airport, I'm going into a farmer's field, and I started my emergency checklist. Turn the fuel off, right, get the power off, did all the things I'm supposed to do to check. Uh, turn, turn left towards the farmer's field and set up for a final approach. At that point, I noticed the flaps were not down. And I always put the flaps down way back earlier. So somehow, maybe in the excitement, my excitement, whether they got knocked up, the lever got hit, and they got up. So I put them down again, put the flaps down again. Set up for the, fed up the approach right to the tomatoes field, a lovely landing approach. Just, just the way I always, I always do it. And I look ahead of me, and there's, a, there's electrical wires. So, but fortunately, I'm set up for a good approach, so I just, I just lifted up the aircraft a little bit in altitude, sailed over the wires, and came back down in my glide for the approach. Touchdown, a lovely touchdown. Nice and soft. It would have been a good landing on the runway. And the tomato plants, or whatever plants they were, started to slow the airplane down. But he had his furrows the same direction I'm going. When I finally got to the end of his field, and the next field had the furrows going across my front. When the nose wheel came down and hit one of the furrows, it flipped the plane over on its back. Ball's land resident Philip Prescott told Nation News he felt it was his duty to rush to the pilot's aid, even though fuel was leaking from the aircraft. 
I was so scared at that the, the whole thing because I've never seen anything in my life. But actually, I I like to watch pictures that they would rescue and disasters. So I think that that was able to help me a lot. In, um, you know, and I'm a Christian too, and I trust in God. I'm a Christian, and I trust in God. And I knew that in, in difficulties and in, in even in traumatic situations, God has helped me overcome. So, and then also seeing what happens in disasters on television, you know, it helped to prepare me. So I didn't really think about, but I thought about the safety and, and what could happen. But, you know, you didn't really think so much that you act, you know what you had to do. The person needed to be safe, so. The new human trafficking report by the U.S. State Department says the authorities in Barbados were investigating an immigration officer for alleged complicity and misconduct in public office as a result of a raid of what the report calls a local brothel in April 2013. It said that officials expected the case to go to trial this year. The report said that Barbados investigated eight new suspected trafficking cases during the past year or so, but only one was determined to be trafficking, and that did not result in a prosecution because the alleged victim did not wish to testify against the trafficker. The other cases were determined to be fraud or prostitution without all the elements of sex trafficking. The British High Commission has denied a claim that Barbadians are being denied entry to the UK because of government's opposition to homosexuality and same-sex marriages. The Daily Nation quoted water sports operator Moses Petro as making the claim after he was barred from entering Britain earlier this month. But the High Commission said that based on the information in the article, Mr. Petro broke immigration rules twice and the UK reserved the right to refuse entry to such travellers. The Ministry of Transport and Works has started construction on the main entrance road to the River Minibus Stand. A nursery drive is now impossible, but provision has been made to access the John Beckles Day Nursery. As a result, public service vehicles now enter the terminal by turning left at Ellie Smith Funeral Home. The early evidence suggests that the temporary systems are working and there was a smooth flow of traffic at the junction. We now go to Hayden Gill for this week's commentary on the report which gave customs a low rating. Whatever the motive behind the releasing of the 2011 customs report at this time, the findings should not be ignored. It revealed the Customs and Excise Department scored a zero in 81 of 86 categories by international assessors. Of the remaining five, the scores ranged between 3.85 and 47%. The lowest score was for transparency. Additionally, it said businesses and individuals who spoke out against the department found themselves blacklisted. All of that is unacceptable. Customs officers perform one of the key functions in guarding this country's borders. If their transparency has been called into question, it is not a matter to be taken lightly. That is why government and the trade unions need to return to the bargaining table and settle the issues related to moving under the Barbados Revenue Authority. No one is benefiting from the current ghost law. In sport, we turn our attention to the Special Olympics World Games in Los Angeles where Barbados has won a silver medal in Boche, a ball sport of the Bowles family in the unified team competition. Unified teams comprise a team of players with and without disabilities. Thailand won the gold and United States the bronze. The seven side footballers have also made a good start winning their first two matches 4-0 and 3-1. For more information, on the Special Olympics, log on to nationnews.com. And finally, a multimillionaire New York property mogul has dictated the terms of his will from beyond the grave, hitting his daughters with stringent rules in order to inherit his wealth. Morris Lebos, who died early this year, decided daughters Marlena, 21, and Victoria, 17, would inherit 10 million U.S. dollars each when they turn 35. However, the 77-year-old ensured they would 
be able to get some early bonuses as long as they attended a good university, marry right, get good jobs, and do not have children out of bedlock. His wife received nothing in the will, and has said that she plans to contest it. And that's Nation News for Tuesday. For more, log on to nationnews.com, as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And remember to pick up your Midweek Nation on Wednesday or subscribe to our e-paper.